everybody oh my god welcome to another week <laughs> at the irish homestead that's not really a homestead yet but hopefully will be and honestly oh, this morning is just beautiful it's very misty again but just check out this sunrise oh love it it's great here because we get the sunrise in the morning over that side and then behind me we get the most amazing sunsets so it's digger day two today we're waiting for tom the digger driver to come 7 a.m and i've got to sort of try and persuade him to dig me the make sure he digs me the pond and that he flattens everything out so it's nice and workable and then also i have sort of fenced off an area where i found some i think they might be slows damsons possibly it's hard to tell right now um i tasted them though and they were sweet which was nice so i fenced off an area where there's quite a few saplings because i don't want him to touch that um i might you might be able to see it so i'm going to leave that a little bit wild and see what happens by next year with that you might just be able to spot the uh tape so it goes round the tree because i obviously don't want him to touch any of the trees but yeah look at this we'll walk over you just hear the cows mooing in the distance i don't know if they'll pick it up see our chairs by the fence because Sam and I sometimes sit there of an evening there's so many birds and swallows swooping around us this time of year it's gorgeous to sit here in the evenings but yeah I hope the camera does this justice but yeah pretty special to be honest So misty you can't see anything further away but i think it's going to be a good day today good day too. how amazing is that sunrise it's nice i think quiet you know the cow the cow's mooing in the mist <laughs> huh <laughs> the sheep's bleating i hope it can pick it up the cow what was uh i was working till about 20 minutes after sundown last night it was a very dim but i've edged all of the building, obviously where Tom's been with his digger, close to the building, as close as he dare. Then I've done the rest by hand around the building and then just raked it back, exposed the sort of foundation stone basically at the bottom there. Not too much, I've been very gentle with it. Yes. But we shall go ahead and crack on and I think we do need to get a stonemason in, don't we? And just oh, let yeah. him have a look over it. Because there's, a few, there's <coughs> a few bellies here and there that I'm not too happy about. There's cracks as well and on the I other... Think, I think the gable end on the where the bedroom's going to be as well. I need to replace the lintels there above that door. So that whole crowning section where the ridge beam's going to go, that needs probably taking down lintels and then rebuilding, which I'm happy to do it myself, but... Maybe I could do it in block rather than stone because it's going to get lime rendered. So I'd rather have someone that does this day in, day out, that knows what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so we need to get some professional advice. We'll find out, I think, Tom, Tom or Joel will know. Someone will know someone that can come in, just have a look over it.
going in. I'm not sure if this is the right key. Might be that one. It's here. Like turn the lock on your new front door. Ah! <laughs> I think it's I think it's falling apart in transit. <laughs> ah, it's better than I remember. That's good. I was worried I'd walk in and go, it's worse than I remember. But yeah, winner. So it's definitely been harder than we expected. Oh wow. I feel like you've done a full workout. It's very uh trying to level this. Yeah, static trying to up. trying to level a static. It's been fun and games. I'm plumbing up. Oh god. But we're getting there. It's uh just get the six inch blocks now underneath the corners. It is level now, it's bob on. But yeah. I kept a load of old sleepers that I found in the old barn. And I'm gonna make some, some steps. Big steps. More of like 8v1, 10v1 timber from the barn. So I can make some proper tiered up steps. But so far so good. I've got the wrong pipe for the underneath, so I should go back. But if you ever want to lose weight, just <laughs> level static caravans for a living. Luckily the weather at the minute has been fabulous. So made life a lot easier. Now don't kill him. <laughs> Is it smoother? They're gonna die. It's just what you want. <laughs> yeah. Right. Home for the helpers. Morning. So I've just got up. It's early. Everyone's still in bed. I had a busy day yesterday, getting static put in and finishing off everything that we had to do with the drainage. We haven't drained, put drains in around the house yet, that's for another day because we can't do anything like that yet. But it's just drainage for the land, so it's not such a bog. And yeah, it's just nice to come and sit here. There's nobody here, kids are still in bed, Sam's still in bed. Just enjoy the peace and listening to the birds because I didn't get to do much of that at home. Um, but yeah, I love it here. I'm so grateful that we bought it. I might not be saying that in a few months when we're trying to renovate the building. <laughs> but for now, I just appreciating how gorgeous it is here and the views and the calmness of the place. Yes, we cleared it back. Um, I know I was umming and ahhing about it, but everyone's advice was really just to get it done because it will grow back quickly and at least we have more of an even uh, ground to walk on and work with. It'll be a bit easier. The rushes are still there. <laughs> They're bent over. I mean, they are a pain. Um, but Tom dug me, Tom the diggerman. Oh, there's a, sw a swallow, I think. A couple of them. They're really enjoying the fact that we've scraped the field back, so someone's happy at least. The birds, two of them there. Anyway, as I was saying, Tom has dug me my duck pond. It's quite a decent size. Slopes up, um, deeper there at the back corner. And there's a little bit of a drain off there that we're going to put a, some kind of sluice gate so that if we get, or when we get, should I say, because it's not a matter of if more than when, the rain gets massively heavy here um, we can stop it from flooding and let it out because there's a drain ditch on the other side of there so it's quite a drop on the other side and that's our neighbour Rob who sold us this place um, it's his field for sheep you can see one line in there now um, so we'll only open that when we need to so hopefully we're a fairly deep pond so whatever ducks we get We'll hopefully be happy here. It's very clay, the soil. 
so we're hoping that we can get away with um, a natural pond rather than liners and things so we're just going to leave it now and see how it kind of goes over the winter and see if it fills itself and work from there I think um, yeah uh, the kids are on about building an island in the middle uh, for the ducks uh, which yeah we could do I suppose uh, I need to look into that now really um, before it fills up so we might put an island in the middle um, and yeah you can see I think moving up the field what the digger drive has done putting up a trampoline together aren't we and we yeah. stuffed it <laughs> Yeah, we've missed a step, so... Uh, so going gonna, back uh, and doing it all, redoing well, it? Well, not completely, but... Yeah. Just meticulously round and round, but... We forgot to put the net on first. Well, we forgot to put the base of the net on. If we can't get a trampoline up, what, what help have we got of getting a farm back on its feet? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Happy? <laughs> We've set the trampoline in the garden. Well, say garden, the field. And then we also have put in a rope swing for the kids. That's high. And there was some dodgy, dodgy ladder work going on. Very unhealth and safety putting that up. But the kids are loving having the swing. And sadly here there was a tree that had fallen. So Sam's been trying to clear it and stack some wood. Because in the minute we haven't got a uh, wood store. And then in this bit where I fenced off from the digger because of the slow bushes. I have strimmed a little bit because um, it was getting out of hand and I wanted to see what was there. So I'm going to kind of leave this bit now, I think. And give it a year, see how how it goes without me doing too much to it. And um, there are a few saplings in there, trees. So there. Yeah, that's what we were up to yesterday. Bug Hotel. Bug Hotel or firewood, if we get a log store. No, Bug ah. Hotel. <laughs> okay. Get Bug the Hotel. bugs on the, on the go. Right. So these are our 350 watt Bluetti panels, which they never have ever got to 350 watt, by the way. We're lucky if we get 200 and something. We have got 316 now, I think once. Well, once. But the <laughs> lead that comes off the back goes into the van. Here, we need some extensions because it's only there. So I can't, I can't get it in a good position. We keep um, missing the sun, don't we? Well, you can only get this much here and then you're missing all of that. And then a, you're getting 30% here, 30 watts. So I'm going to build a stanchion with one of the lazy Susan bearings, like our neighbour, and yeah. then we can we can move the panels around. We need a bit of a bit longer wire though, don't we? Yeah, we need an extension, us... and we need a bearing, and then I'll construct something to sit the panels on, so we can just move the panels around because it is a bit of a tune moving them about eight days. I don't know if you noticed from the van as well. There was also a big orange hook-up lead as well, which goes into a generator. This is in here. It's only small, a little ponder, but honestly, it's it, it is literally whoosh, one pull, and it's not even a hard pull, and it fires up. If you're gonna get a generator, get a Honda because they are one pull technology. This is an old one, but it's it, it's so easy to service. Nick, our mechanic friend, took the carb out and cleaned it all. It's very easy to do yourself. So and it's starts quite on the quiet, button. Isn't it? Yeah, it's quiet. It's quiet. But well, that tops us up with power into the van. Because if you've got a cloudy days, then you're not getting all the juice in your panels. That's set then up your the Bluetti we've got. box is going down. So at the minute we are off grid, but we're we're on the we're just we're close to sailing close to the wind but if we come inside i'll show you so our little power box is in here 
pretty dark. Will that light make any difference there? I think it's clear enough picking it up. So yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, we're pretty low there. But it's just a fly lead like that. And obviously that is going to the power box of the actual van. So that's just plugged straight into the van like you would with the mains hook up. And this comes from the Jenny. So I'll just undo that plug into that plug. The van runs off the Jenny. Plug the, what is it called in? Plug your power box into your socket in the van. And then plug this into your box and voila. You'd be pulling 450 watts mains power, which is uh, fantastic. Which is good from a two kilowatt Honda Jenny getting mains power. So it's um, easy peasy. <laughs> that Bluetti's done us all around Europe. We've been off grid with it. It's a cracking piece of kit, but they're about this big, the batteries that you put on. I think the B230s. And you can just stack them and stack them and stack them. I mean, you could, you could make a 10 kilowatt system if you wanted. But that's the beauty of the Bluetti system is you can add on so we shall add on to it and uh, but i'm chuffed that it's a bit working we're gonna have the same sort of system when it comes to the house maybe not bluetti it'll be some we've looked at various different companies but i think wind and solar have a 10 kilowatt system you know and no bills because we have that ball of fire in space and then mother nature's wind why not harness that power for free. Make shift steps. Yeah. This will do. The timber's not the best because uh, <laughs> this is the old timber from just generally around from the old lean twos. This is the best of the bunch. It's not the best, but once I've uh, knocked it together and creosoted it, and hopefully it'll be solid, but some of it is just mush. <laughs> Doing what we can Doing for what now, because um, static steps. What are a couple of hundred well, quid? Yeah. Best part of two hundred quid. Euro. Maybe less if you get a cheaper set, but we need something I pretty can't, sturdy. I can't make them how I want with just stringers because I haven't got that sort of timber here. So I know this looks a bit long-winded, but they'll be strong and they'll do the trick. So jobs are good. You've got to do what you got to do, haven't you? With what we've not even got much timber left. And you've not even got all your tools here. No, it's all how it used <laughs> to be. Old school. We haven't brought anything over yet. Nothing. Got this. Luckily, I've got a drill. It's not an impact driver, and a tape and a hammer. So this is how it was back in day. Old eh? school. Back in day, it was all old school. That's the thing with John Reeve. If you're not showing how to do it by hand at the beginning, then you'd be lost about your tools and think, oh, I can't do that without a chop saw. All joinery can be done with a square, a string, a hammer, and a saw. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> even roofs. Do a whole roof with a... Uh... So you're gonna do your whole, our whole roof like that, are you? Maybe I should. <laughs> you can even, I've got a bevel. I have got a bevel with me, but you can even make your own bevel. <laughs> you can make your own square if you wanted. Using, using your tape measure, so yeah. You'll manage. We're for getting now. through, we're getting through. So let's see how he's getting on. It's cool down lows. It was like 20, high 20s today. Not the best days to be doing this. No, it was like 29 today. <laughs> That's what he said. And I got in the van earlier in town, it's 29 degrees. Yeah. Looking good. Well, it's done a good job with what you want. Like asked. a rat's done it because it's cut with a chainsaw. Who's <laughs> <laughs> well, done it? Used a chainsaw as my main tool for cutting sheet material, but they have. So I was just in here in this animal house pulling things out and whoa. Huh? That looks a little bit scary. Ooh, it's got some weight to it. That shoe. Check those nails out. Oh, they're like teeth. Crikey. Seen some work that. Seen that boot. Jesus. Loving your boot. 
Look at that scary boot. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> Did the boot scare you that much? You tipped it over the wheelbarrow. I've just found this as well. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a saddle. It's got the Irish shamrocks on it. Quite heavy. Leather. Um, I think it's something to do with. No, I don't know. What is it, Benj? What do we think it is? Interesting. I'm not throwing it away though. I like it. I like the Irish shamrocks on it. So we are just cleaning out the other barn. The one that's next to the house. And a tool for that, isn't it? Finding all sorts of random tool. bits of metal. Brick a brat. The book. And there's a book up there. Right. Can't imagine it's gonna be in very good condition. Not that one. <laughs> Say. Jesus. On the 8th of November, the King opened part of the 1767. Let's have a look. Jeepers. Mm. It's bound with like fabric. Um, Deal. We're gonna have a, like a world champion weigh in here. It's called the well, that yeah. chapter is called The Making of the Republic. Mm. It's a fabric bound book. It's like its own operation of clearing this out, we've not yeah. even really. Yeah, there's just this, this one's uh, full this is day going on to be really. epic, isn't it? Yeah. And you can see someone's tried to point the side there. Mm. It's uh, like, I think they've thrown it at it. You know. So this is a wall here, dividing these two rooms. Because like um, Gabriel said, that one was for pigs and one side was for the horse. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this is outrageous. This is sweat. Yeah, Ireland is hot in September. Very Who knew? Hot. Who knew? Well. That is a wrap. We shall throw the tools down for this week. It's been epic. The past two weeks we have, well, as you can see, a lot of the camera follows me around there. With the salt, there's what, 200 ton of stone gone down. So we can at least get around the buildings and there's no major structural works going on, but we have done an epic amount of clearing of the land. We've got a pond, we have temporary living, which we dreamed of, but we have to go back to England and sell George, our beloved Adria Matrix. It's absolutely amazing. It took us through 16 countries. At the end of this month, it'll be one year since we left bricks and mortar in, in our town of Stockport in Manchester. And now we're here, setting up a new, a new homestead, an Irish homestead. And it's absolutely amazing. The people here we've met so far are great and they've been so helpful and honestly i just couldn't have asked for more it's it's been an achievement just to get you know <laughs> just get everything set up here so but we're gonna have to leave to england and sell the van so if you are interested in buying the van by the way do leave a comment because you know we have to we have to get rid of it because to fund to fund the goddamn build here so over to england to sell the motorhome it's, it's going to be so sad to see it drive off but it's the next chapter now. It's what we have to do. Within 12 months, we've seen a section of the world and we're at, we've bought an Irish cottage. We will travel again, but now we just need to set up home base, a proper home base. So I hope everyone's enjoyed it so far and thanks for all of your comments. And honestly, it keeps us going here because it is long graft days, um, which I do love. But yeah, it's it's nice to be part of a, a different community of people, that other people that are doing it as well. So yeah, we shall see you when we get back.